In November of 2009, Vada Vasquez was the victim of a stray bullet. The shooting occurred at 3.45 p.m. as Ms. Vasquez and a friend walked along Home Street from the Bronx Latin School toward their homes. The accused 16-year-old baby-faced Bronx boy would give a written and videotaped confession admitting to the shooting. At his arraignment, he would plea not guilty. As his mother wept in the third row of the courtroom, Carvet Gentles and four other young men, all members of the Gorilla Stone Blood Gang, were arraigned and sent to Rikers Island without bail. Gentles' lawyer maintained his client's innocence, insisting, he does well in school, he comes from a nice family. But some members of this nice family happened to be the older gang members who allegedly handed Gentles the gun and told him to shoot because he was the only one without an arrest record. Suspect, Rohan Francis, 18, is Gentle's uncle, and brothers Cleve Smith, 20, and Clivey Smith, 19, are cousins, according to the Daily News. Gentle's mother moved to the Bronx from Jamaica over a decade ago, and at age 6, Carvet joined her a few years after her arrival. But Gentle's father was unable to obtain a visa, and Gentle's didn't get along with his stepfather, so he's been living with his uncle Francis. Some neighbors who know Gentles insist he showed promise by gaining admission to the Bronx Leadership Academy, but he soon began skipping class and hanging with a tough crowd. By July, he was changing. The distraught mom says it's been a constant struggle to keep her boy from the block at East 169th Street and Boston Road, known for drug dealing and gunfire. It's where her own father was shot nine times in the back when she was a teen. Clivey, who went by the name Momo, was one of the more violent out of the crew, or in this case, the more dangerous of the family. His rap sheet speaks for itself. In late March of 2007, five people were arrested after a gunfight in the Bronx on a Friday night. This included a teen who fired at police officers, the bodega clerk who gave him the gun, and one of the shooting victims, the authorities said. The shooting, in which two people were wounded, grew out of a fight in front of the Marino Bodega at East 169th Street and Clinton Avenue about 8 p.m. The fight started as three of the people later arrested, Sam, 38. His brother and, 37. And their friend Karen, 39. Were looking for a man who had apparently beaten up one of their friends, a woman, over money. The three could not find the man, but spotted his friend outside the store. This friend turned out to be Momo, who was 16 at the time. When Momo refused to help the brothers and the woman find the man, they began kicking and punching Momo, the police said. Momo ran into the bodega, where a clerk handed him a 45 caliber handgun. Momo immediately ran back out and began shooting, the police said. He hit Sam in the lower right side of his chest, and another man, Juan, 18, in the right knee and in both hips. It was unclear at the time whether Juan had been with the brothers and the woman. The police believed that Sam was carrying a gun, though he never fired it. Officers on patrol with the Street Narcotics Enforcement Unit saw the shooting and chased Momo, who was running down the street. Momo fired at the officers, and they fired back, the police said, but no one was hit in that exchange. The police saw Momo run into a house two blocks from the bodega on Franklin Avenue, where he was arrested. Sam and Juan both were initially reported to be in critical condition, but they was good later. Sam, his brother Ant and Karen were each charged with attempted murder, assault and acting in concert, according to a spokesman from the Bronx District Attorney's Office. They were also charged with criminal possession of a weapon, even though the police have not found the gun they believe Sam had been carrying. Not sure how most of that turned out for them, but they may have beat some of those charges. Momo, who was treated for the injuries he received in the beating, was arrested and charged with second and third degree criminal possession of a weapon. The bodega clerk was charged with criminal possession of a weapon. Momo made his $25,000 bail, the Bronx DA said. But prosecutors did not meet the requirement of New York Criminal Procedure Law Section 3030, which says they must be ready for trial within six months of an indictment. The Bronx DA's office said Momo's dual role as a criminal and victim in the incident complicated their prosecution. On October 29, 2007, the case was dismissed. Even before the October 29 dismissal, however, Momo could have been behind bars if a judge had imposed bail when Momo was arrested in another assault in a case that again involved a gun over the summer. He was busted in the Bronx in July for punching his cousin Gentle's mother in the face and for carrying a handgun, according to a criminal complaint. Bail was requested, but he ended up out of the jail without paying. So, as we stated, it would be 2009 when the shooting of Vada would take place.
Five years after she was shot in the head while waiting for a school bus, there was justice for her. These guys, with their street names, Carvet Z. Co. Gentles, Rohan Santana Francis, Clive Momo Smith and Daryl Dutch Joe, all copped to being involved in the 2009 Bronx shooting that left Vasquez's life changed forever. Prosecutors said the gang members were aiming for Ty, whose brother had a beef with Joe, while they were both locked up in Rikers Island. At Joe's direction, Francis, Momo and Gentles went after Ty on November 19, 2009. They chased him through Morrisania, and Gentles opened fire. He hit his target twice, in the arm and chest. A third shot missed, hitting Vasquez, then 15, in the head as she was trying to get home from Bronx Latin School. The bullet ripped through the left side of her skull. Unable to move, she pleaded with a detective who rushed to her aid, don't let me die. About two days later, the 19-year-old man targeted in the shooting described the moments before Gentles opened fire on him. Ty said he nervously watched a gun get passed among five gangbangers before it landed in the hands of a 16-year-old identified as Carvet Gentles. And then he put his hood on, turned around and started walking toward us, Ty told the news. When I saw him coming at me, I knew they were trying to kill me. Ty tried to flee the reputed gang members, but was shot once in the back and once in the shoulder. And one stray bullet slammed into Vada's skull as she walked home from school on a Monday, leaving her fighting for her life. Vada was taken off a ventilator, but was as in critical condition at Lincoln Hospital. I'm so sad about what happened to her, Ty said. I feel terrible. She's innocent, like I'm innocent. I'm speaking out because that little girl deserves justice. The five suspects, Gentles, Rohan Francis, 18, Cleve Smith, 20, Clivey Smith, 19, and Dwayne Taylor, 23, were tossed into jail on attempted murder charges. Investigators believed they targeted Ty over a Rikers Island beef between an inmate gang member and one of his brothers. A day after he left the hospital, Ty gave the most detailed account yet of the shooting. The day, he said, began with the best possible news. Ty met with his lawyer in the Bronx and was told that attempted murder charges against him stemming from a July shooting were going to be dropped. I told him it was his lucky day, lawyer Martin Galvin said. Ty said he popped into a deli on Home Street when he was confronted by a man he knew from the neighborhood, Momo, he said, whatever happened between my man and your brothers, let's settle it, Ty, his right arm in a sling, recalled. I didn't know what he was talking about. Momo followed Ty outside. Ty said he noticed four menacing looking men glaring at him from up the block. He recognized them from the neighborhood, except Gentles. As Momo continued to harass him, Ty said he spotted Taylor try to hand a gun to Francis. Francis already had one, pulling out the handle from his pants to prove it. Francis, Gentles' uncle, then passed him his 40 caliber gun, Ty said. Fearing for his life, Ty pushed Momo into Gentles and sped off. Ty said Gentles fired at least five shots, with one puncturing his lung. I'm angry people tried to make me feel like it's my fault, Ty said. I don't know why these guys did this to me. As for Vada, she spent a week in a coma and was eventually able to return to school and graduate. But life for her will never be the same. She lost part of her brain, but as of 2014, she was continuing to fight to reclaim her life. She was studying criminal justice at LaGuardia Community College. After her shooting, cops and prosecutors from the Bronx District Attorney's Office teamed up to take down the members of the Bloods gang that were involved. In all, 38 gang members were arrested. Although Momo would eventually plead guilty in connection to the shooting, he had initially proclaimed his innocence during a jailhouse interview. He talked of Rikers Island and how it is one big headache. It's like having the worst migraine you can ever have, Momo, told the New York Post. Momo also claimed he was implicated by crooked cops looking to frame him for the crime. Momo swore he had nothing to do with the shooting. I didn't do it, said Momo, who was busted along with his brother, Cleve Smith, and Rohan Francis, 18. I'm 100% innocent, no, I'm 1000% innocent. Momo also said he was implicated because of his rap sheet and that cops have a beef with him after getting off on a 2007 shooting when it was deemed self-defense. I've got a crazy history, said Momo. I'm not going to risk my freedom by doing anything stupid. I wasn't at the scene. I didn't hand no gun to anyone. He also said that his heart goes out to Vada. If someone did that to my sister, I'd lose my head, he said. Now they're accusing me of doing this to someone else. Momo also denied police accusations that he and three others that were busted are gang members. 
He showed a post reporter tattoos that he has on his hands and neck, noting that they featured the names of family members and had nothing to do with the Gorilla Bloods. Momo said cops barged into his apartment early and that they never recovered a gun because he doesn't own one. A Bronx judge would end up sentencing Rohin Santana Francis and Carvet Zico Gentles to 15 years in prison and Clavy Momo Smith to 11 years behind bars for their roles in the 2009 shooting of Vada Vasquez. And this wraps it up for this one. But as always, stay low and thanks for watching.